Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to be showing you two tools in Adobe Illustrator 2021 that you should be using more. Those are the grid tools. Now grids make such a big difference when it comes to making precise designs like logos and icons and these tools are the perfect starting point if you aren't already used to using them. So be sure to download our free template from the description below and we'll head onto the computer now and show you how to use them. So we can find the grid tools over in the left hand toolbar and they sit underneath the line segment tool. So if I click and hold on that, the two bottom tools within this list are the tools we're going to be looking at. Now we have the rectangular grid tool and the polar grid tool. In this case I'm actually going to start with the polar grid tool and we'll move back onto the rectangular grid tool in just a moment. So moving over to the right hand side of my document. I can use this by simply clicking and dragging and these work in the same way as the normal shape tools would work. I can click and drag out an ellipse in this case or if I hold shift it's going to lock the aspect ratio and we can create perfect circles. Now you'll notice we have a series of circles being created with the polar grid tool and these radial dividers that create this pie chart kind of look. We can actually change these on the fly. So if I use my up and down arrows I can add more circles with the up arrow or I can remove circles with the down arrow. Conversely I can use the right arrow to add more radial dividers and the left arrow to remove the radial dividers. So I'm going to remove all of the radial dividers in this case and I'm going to add another circle to this. I'm going to hold shift and we'll let go. So if I go over to my selection tool we have a series of circles with a stroke applied, no fill although we do have the option to add a fill if we want and these are essentially all grouped together when we create this. Now I'm going to go back over to the left hand side and select my rectangular grid tool now and I'm going to use my smart guides to start this aligning with the top of the outermost circle here. If I click and drag you can see this time we are creating a rectangular grid. Holding shift is going to lock this to be a perfect square. The same thing applies here if I use the right and left arrows I can add columns so the right arrow is going to add more columns the left arrow is going to remove columns if I press the up arrow we can add rows and the down arrow is going to remove rows. So what I'm going to do is use my smart guides and basically create a matching number of rows to this circle and this is where these tools can come in handy for creating grids for our designs. So again holding shift is going to lock this to be a perfect square. I'll make sure this is the same height as the circle and I can always reposition this just to make sure this is definitely snapping correctly and now I can use something like my shape builder tool to create a design from this. So I'm going to click and drag over both of them. We'll enable our shape builder tool and what I'm going to do is just create a new fill color here. So let's just pick a bright blue for example and I can simply start clicking and dragging through sections of these overlapping grids to create a rough design. So I'm just going to speed through this process to see what we can come up with. Okay, so we've created this very simple design. Now when we create these grids, all of these lines are essentially grouped together and when we use the Shape Builder tool, we can also get some new groupings. So it's always worth clicking and dragging over everything and I can use my keyboard shortcut, which is Shift Command G or Shift Control G. Hit that a few times to make sure everything's ungrouped. I'm just going to select the blue area, press Command X or Control X to cut that away. Let's delete everything else here and I can press Command F to paste that back in place. There are a few small areas that I missed with my shape builder tool but I can just use my direct selection tool to click on them and make sure they're deleted. I'm also going to remove the stroke color and with my direct selection tool I'm just going to click and drag over these sharper corners and just slightly round them off to finish off this abstract design. Move this back over and that's just one example of what we can do with these grid tools. Now if we go back to our rectangular grid tool if I double click on it we also get some options here. So I can set custom sizes up at the top. We can also input the number of horizontal and vertical dividers if we want to and we also have this skew option. So in this case I'm just going to take our vertical dividers down to zero and we'll go with 10 horizontal dividers and in this skew option I'm just going to say 10%. You'll see down at the bottom we have the option to create a fill grid which essentially just means we're going to create this with a fill color 
color instead of a stroke. But for this example, I'm just going to leave this unchecked and click OK. So you can see nothing actually gets created, but if I click and drag now, you can see we're creating a new grid without any vertical dividers. What I'll do is just apply a stroke color to this. We'll just go with a blue for now for the time being. And if I zoom in, you'll notice that each box is essentially getting 10% smaller than the previous box. So that's what the skew value is doing here. So I'm just going to move that off to the side. Again, I can use my shape builder tool to create something a little bit more interesting like we have over on the left hand side. This also applies to the polar grid tool. If I select that again, double click on it, we get the same options here, except in this case we have concentric dividers, which is the number of circles essentially. And then we get our radial dividers, which are the dividing lines. So let's just add a value of six to this. And we'll say six concentric dividers as well. I'm also going to apply a 20% skew to the concentric dividers. We can also do this with the radial dividers, but in this case, I'm just going to leave that at zero and I'm going to go down and click OK. Again, just clicking and dragging, holding shift again to lock the aspect ratio. We can create another grid here and you can see the way these concentric dividers are being distributed. So last but not least, let's just jump back to my shape builder tool and I can always create something interesting by just removing sections from these segments. And there we have it for an overview of the grid tools in Adobe Illustrator. If you want to learn more about graphic design, we've put together a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of trying to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs, how to pick the right colors for your designs and how to pick the right typefaces for your project. So if you're serious about leveling up as a graphic designer, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for and ours is free. The link's in the description. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll see you there.